And then, uh, so this Maranta Smaryanta Swami is well known. And another very well known is, is Bhaktya Sanjataya Bhaktya. That Bhakti gives rise to Bhakti. So here it's been suggested that this indicates that Bhakti in the stage of following the rules and regulations by the sadhana bhakti that gives rise to the uh, higher level of Radhanuga Bhakti in which Vibrat Uttula Kam Tanum in which one aspires for one's spiritual body to exhibit symptoms of transcendental ecstasy such as standing with the bodily hands on them. Of course one aspires for that even within by the bhakti. Uh, so following the rules and regulations of spiritual life. But uh, in Raghunov Bhakti, especially the Lolyam or Lala Samai Pratana the 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 is a strong desire, Lama Samai Pratana prayer, which is full of longing, then one begins to adopt this mood, not just formally or officially serving the Lord, but with great feeling, calling out to him and serving him. And this is the only price to attain Krishna. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati Kriyatam Yari Katopi Rabyati Tatra Lolya Mapimbulya Mekala Kuti Janma Sukritaya Nala Mete This Rupa Goswami has given the clue how can we get Bhakti? What, is, what do we have to do? We have the need Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi. This is definition of Bhakti. Bhakti can be defined in various ways. Uh, bhakti means that the consciousness will be uh, over flooded with the, the Krishna Bhakti Ras. And he states that, of course, that's maybe not a definition because it's defining, giving the definition. Anyway, he speaks of the consciousness which is uh, over flooded with this Krishna Bhakti Ras. And he states that if you can purchase this anywhere, purchase it. Buy it. He's giving a recommendation. It's like they have recommendations that uh, a cricket star recommends Pepsi Cola or something like this. It's, it's a recommendation and people think, oh, he said, it. okay, I should do so. Of course, he's doing that for money. He doesn't give a damn for Pepsi Cola. Or, of course, he might not give himself. Not that much that he'd have his picture plastered everywhere. Uh, it's not voluntarily that he's recommending Pepsi. But he does so for to get some money. But the, the idea is that because the cricket star is someone who is appreciated and recognized by others, so his recommendation that carries more weight and people take it seriously. It could be any person in the advertisement saying, bring Pepsi, but because it's a recognized person, therefore people tend to take it more seriously. So the same principle applies even though this verse, of course uh, anyone, not anyone, but uh, one who's versed in Sanskrit, they can compose verses. Which is why we don't necessarily take seriously any verse which anyone says. Or any, but we see, there is the Mool Shastra that is called Shuti. That is uh, that is Veda Narayana Saksha. That is directly manifested from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
And there is also Smriti Shastra, that which is not directly spoken by the Lord, or not directly the Vedas, uh, actually it is the Vedas, but it's not part of the, there's originally one Veda and then that's divided into four, so it's not part of the four Vedas which are considered original and whose form is unchangeable. But there's also Smriti Shastra, which is uh, composed later by great personalities, Rishis and Munis and Manu. Manu Samhita is the most important among the Shastras, which are specifically called Smriti Shastras. So the, these are considered as good as Shruti because they are, they follow the same principle as Shruti and it's accepted that even though the Lord doesn't directly speak them, but he, he, he directly speaks to the Munis and Rishis. He, he reveals that knowledge. Just like to Brahma, Tene Brahma Hridaya Ahadika Vihe. This, uh, the Supreme Personality of God had revealed knowledge within the heart to Brahma. So we have the Brahma Samhita. Brahma means that which is given by Brahma. So Brahma Samhita, that is, uh, that is given by Lord Brahma and that is accepted as good as Shruti because it's accepted that it is revealed within the heart of Brahma by the Supreme Person of the Godhead Himself. So, Rupa Goswami's statements, they, may be, they can be considered Smriti because certainly Rupa Goswami is on the same level as the great uh, Rishis who have compiled what is considered the general body of Smriti Shastra, but specifically that, that is accepted by the Gorya Vaishnavas because they accept him as an authority. That point that we accept a cricket star as an authority. So it's the same principle, but on, on a much more sublime platform, that we accept Rupa Goswami as an authority. So uh, he says, buy it. He's not saying buy Pepsi. He's not saying buy whatever nonsense things uh, marketing. But this is the uh, topmost attainable principle that Krishna Vishaya Prema Param Purusharta. It is the topmost attainable principle that is this love of Krishna that is that transcends or is better than anything that can be attained through the paths of dharma, artha, karma and moksha. In fact, whatever may be attained through dharma, artha, karma and moksha is compared to this parampurusharta, Krishna Vishaya Prima, Krishna, or briefly Krishna Prima. The jara agi chuna tulla chari purusharta. And everything else in comparison to this is insignificant. So, uh, therefore, Rupa Goswami says, considering that everything else in this world compared to Krishna Prem is insignificant, buy it. By any means. Wherever it is available, find it out and buy it. Just like there may be some rare product which is considered very valuable. So someone who knows the value of that, they will search it out and try to try to find it. If there's some particular brand of medicine which people know is very good, there may be other there may be so many other varieties available, just like for instance some Chavan Prash, where there are so many different companies which make it. But if one happens to consider that one particular brand is far superior to others, then he will take the trouble to search it out. And he will go to so many different shops and they'll say, well, we have 
Dabo Chavan Krishna Ramanda, and then Zandu Chavan Krishna Ramanda. And as well as Chavan Krishna, no, but we don't want this. We want this particular one. And then they'll search it out and find it. And they won't be satisfied unless they get that particular one. Or there, there is some aphrodisiac which is, uh, that is uh, produced from rhinoceros horn. So it's not a very easy thing to get, but people consider it very highly because they're interested in sex. So uh, certain persons at great risk, no doubt, they go rhinoceros hunting, it's great risk because the rhinoceros, instead of the rhinoceros being the prey, you might become the prey of the rhinoceros. Instead of you getting the rhinoceros horn, in your bag, you might get it right in your stomach. So it's dangerous in that way. It's also dangerous because it's illegal and you might get caught. And if you get caught then doing that, then uh, if you get caught before you kill the rhinoceros, then you just have to pay a fine or go to prison. If you get caught after killing the rhinoceros, then you have to share some of the profits with the person, with the legal officer who caught you. So, in this way, it's not very easy to do, but people, they take all risk to hunt the rhinoceros because there are very great returns. You get a lot of money by getting the rhinoceros home. So, in the same way, Guru Goswami says, Kriyatam Yadipito Biyabhyate Wherever it's available, somehow or other, find it out. It's not you have to find the rhinoceros. You, where is the rhinoceros? It's not like going, even if you're searching in a shop, you have a fairly good idea it's in the shop, but where to find the rhinoceros? It's not so difficult, not so easy. Somehow you have to find it, and then you have to get it. So in the same way, Rupa Goswami says, somehow or other, we should try to find that uh, wherever. Wherever it is available, it should be bought. Create town, it should be bought. Then what is the price? What do we have to do? If it's a matter of buying Chavan Prash, you simply get the money. If it's a matter of killing the rhinoceros, you have to shoot them. And it's, it's easier said than done because they have a thick hide. It's so thick, it's like, a, like, a, like an army tank. So simply shooting it with a bullet that will just bounce off, the rhinoceros will laugh at you. So the only way to shoot a rhinoceros is right between the eyes, but then, then he'll, when he's charging at you, you have to shoot and it has to be accurate. Otherwise, instead of killing the rhinoceros, it's more likely that he'll kill you. So uh, what is the price? It's, if it's such a wonderful thing and such a very rare thing, we can imagine that there is some uh, risk involved or something very great has to be given, but Rupa Goswami says that Loyam Tasya Mulyam Apimul Tasya Loyam Apimul Mekam The only one price, there is only one price, and that is a very strong desire to attain it. Greed, I must get it. Very overwhelming desire. That uh, Rupa Goswami gives another example of the uh, the best Yogati hmm? Yata Yuto. You know, yes. That uh, he gives, he prays to the Supreme Lord that may my desire for you. He gives the example just like a young boy and a young girl. When they come together, there's a very strong desire for each other. So he gives that example. It's it's a re-reflection of the perverted reflection. The feelings of a young boy for a young girl, that is a perverted reflection of Krishna's feelings of his, of uh, 
his feelings for Srimati Radharani and for the different, his different shaktis, you know, there's a, the Rukmini and the queens, a strong feeling, and the feelings that he had for them, the feelings that he had for Krishna, the feelings of Krishna's queens, and Radharani and the Gopis for Krishna. So a perverted reflection of that is the feelings that a young boy and a young girl have reached a very strong feeling. I can't live without you, and there are so many cases of suicide, and they write so many books. If I, I, I can't live without you, and the proof is given that when they're, okay, you're not allowed to be with this young boy or young girl, and then suicide. Stupid. But, uh, and people write, there are so many love stories, in, any, in Sanskrit also, it's not that it's only Shastra in Sanskrit, but there are so many kavyas, uh, just, it's just, or poems, it's just uh, bhotik, lokik, um, ordinary love stories. There's a famous, uh, very famous uh, drama, poem by uh, Kalidas, Avinav Shakuntala. Of course, it's taken from Shastra, Mahabharata, but it's presented simply as a, uh, just some mundane love story. Once Prabhupada was asked that, uh, well, you, you never told anything about Nala Maharaj. Prabhupada said, we don't have anything to do with Nala Maharaj. It's a famous story in Mahabharata, Mahabharata, which inculcates the sense of how uh, a uh, woman, she should be pati rata nari, she should be very attached to her husband. There are various such stories in Satyabhan and Savitri, so in Mahabharata. And another one very famous is Nala Damayanti. So someone was saying to Pro- Prabhupada, you never spoke about Nala Maharaj. Prabhupada said, we don't have to do Nala Maharaj. That's, it's, a, it's a religious principle that works there in Mahabharata. That that one should be pati vrata. But it's the, Prabhupada, he also states this principle. One should be means a wife should be. Uh, so uh, Prabhupada states this principle, but he doesn't tell the whole long story of Nala and Dhamma, because he's telling Srimad Bhagavatam, which is Purana Mamalam, in which that's also, oh, that principle is also stated, but not in great length, a great love story of how they love each other and then. The personality of Kali enters now that we've seen it. And uh, he be- his mind becomes uh, polluted and he abandons his wife. And then there's a long story, eventually she's reunited with him and they live happily ever after. So uh, that, this Monday love story is a perverted reflection of the actual love story in the spiritual world. But Rupa Goswami takes that example to say how we should be taking the perverted reflection to show him that that we can see in this world, how we should, how he desires, he prays to Krishna, that may I be attached to you, just as a young boy is attached to a young girl, or vice versa. But we should be very careful of this mundane infatuation, which blinds the conditioned soul, but rather our infatuation should be for Krishna, if we have that, that, that very strong feeling of oh, eating, sleeping, or maybe not even eating or sleeping, because can't eat or sleep, because thinking of my girlfriend. So that we see also the great devotees, Nidra Harabi, Vihara Kali, Jito, they conquered over eating and sleeping, the six first round. They, finally they stopped eating and sleeping. They didn't, it wasn't that they were trying to stay awake during class or any such thing, but uh, they didn't, they couldn't sleep, because they, didn't, they didn't think of sleeping, because they were so much absorbed in love of Krishna, you have very strong emotions, you can't sleep, if someone very close to you get the news dies, so you get the news, open the telegram, Oh, your father did. Oh, okay. All right, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> it doesn't happen. It's, it's, it's affected by it. 
So, like that, when Krishna praying, is, uh, one is so much, uh, or you can't, if you're very much disturbed uh, by something, if you're very busy, you have something to do, you can read something you consider very important, or if you're absorbed in reading a book or some such thing, then you don't feel like eating. Uh, you just don't, you just forget it. That's all. So, in the same way, the, the six Goswamis of Vindava may have given us an example of devotees who overcame eating and sleeping. Overcame uh, not by any yogic process or, uh, of artificially controlling the senses, but simply by being absorbed in the overwhelming feeling which were the Gopi Bhava, Samatha, Bilahari, the constant waves of the, the emotional uh, feelings of the gopis for Krishna, Hera, Deva, Jadevi, Kitalavite, Hinanda, Sunakuta, and this was uh, absorbed in the uh, in this feeling, in this where where is Krishna? Where is uh, where is the, the feeling like this? So in, in this way a very strong feeling for Krishna very, very strong feeling so that uh, that technique yes, we were discussing that is technically called Raga Nikabhat in which the the very strong feelings for Krishna that is the that is the basis of one's bhakti. That is the uh, substance of one's bhakti. Whereas in uh Vaidhi Bhakti the rules and regulations are the basis because one is not fixed in feelings for Krishna. Some feelings may be there, otherwise why would one be taking up bhakti at all? Presumably there's some feeling for Krishna. And this one is very materialistic. Hare Krishna. Please don't lean on this. This, this is Ananta Balaram, this stamina. Not for us to lean on. So, uh, some feelings are there, but the, the basis has to be rules and regulations because uh, the feelings for Krishna are not strong enough to maintain us in, the, in devotional service 24 hours a day. Therefore, the rules and regulations are there to, to uh, maintain us in devotional service 24 hours a day. That helps us to, because we're not fixed in Smartapya Satitam Vishnu, Vismartapya Majapya Jit, because we're not fixing always thinking Krishna and never forgetting Krishna. Therefore, we have a fixed program of sadhana. So, we follow this, we should do that will keep us always engaged, and this uh, affects our remembrance of Krishna. So the sadhana bhakti, the vaidhi sadhana bhakti, and raga nuga sadhana bhakti, in which this sadhana, still sadhana, means still one is in the stage of practice. But practicing, following in the stage, following in the footsteps of those who, whose bhakti is by its very substance full of feeling. So this is mentioned here in this verse, Bhaktya Sanjate, Bhaktya Sanjate Ya Bhaktya. Bhakti in the stage of following rules and regulations, that gives rise to Bhakti Bhakti. Anyway, let's go back to the Tantra. Lola Bhakti Mola Nikola, yes, so to, following the rules and regulations, that is supposed to give, uh, rise to feelings for Krishna. Just like we're told to chant Hare Krishna. That is the basic vidhi or rule in Vaidhi Bhakti. We must chant a minimum number of rounds of the Hare Krishna mantra. But it, why, why is that? Because Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Eto Shabhav Jai Jave Tar Krishna Upajai Bhav. Because by chanting the names of Krishna, feelings for Krishna will arise within the heart. 
So that feeling, and the, the, the feeling that should be developed, and when that becomes a very strong greed, greed I must get Krishna. Whatever I do, Kinivo, Lutivo, Harinamaras, this Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives, uh, in his song, he gives the, I must get that Harinamaras, I'll buy it, I'll steal it, by, by whatever means, I must attain the, the Harinamaras, the, the taste in chanting the holy names. Gorgi Shodas Babaji Maharaj was certainly perfect in chanting the holy names, but sometimes, because Krishna, he will reveal himself as he likes. Even to perfect devotees, it may be that Krishna may hide himself from them sometimes. So sometimes, Gorgi Shodas Babaji Maharaj was chanting and chanting the holy names, and he felt that the Haranama Skruti Holona, the, the Nam, the holy name didn't manifest to me. So then in the frustration he would simply submerge himself in the Ganga for sometimes days on end. And that, I mean, until I get this taste for the holy name, I see Krishna, why, why don't you come to me? So this is uh, practically madness and love of God. So that, that feeling of great greed, uh, one practically becomes like a madman. It's, uh, it's like the lover becomes a madman. He does st- crazy things out of love. He'll you know, maybe you know, climb up and she's the, the heroine who's kept in a tower somewhere. These, these are love stories. So he, at great risk, he climbs up in, with the wind and the rain blowing and all these things. Somehow he, he does crazy things to, or out of craziness, he, he, he can't think properly so, because he's overwhelmed by love. So, uh, in the same way, a devotee, he, he becomes uh, almost crazy in love with Krishna. But, uh, that is also stated here in this 11th canto of Bhagavatam. Ivan Vrata, Sukriya Nama Kirtya, Jata Nurago, Dutta Chitta Uchai. But uh, when one has Jata Anurag, when one's feelings for Krishna are awakened, then he chants the holy name very loudly, as if uh, I'm just not caring for others. Hasapati, Rodati. Nrtiti, he uh, laughs, he cries, he dances, he doesn't care what other people think. Madness of God. So, uh, this Lodam, Lodam, Mekalam, Janma Koti Sukritayana Lapete, this is the only prose. There's this very strong desire to attain Krishna that cannot be had even by performing mundane pious activities over millions of lifetimes. One cannot attain love of Krishna, but one has a very strong desire. So how to get that? Well, here it said, Bhaktya Sanjatayana, Bhaktya Sanjatayana, Bhaktya. That Bhakti gives rise to Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti, this Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasura Thakur is explaining the Prabhupada, Vaidhi Bhakti leads to this uh, Raganoga Bhakti, in which uh, Raganoga means that one, one's desire to attain such feelings for Krishna are becoming very strong. He's not, he's not fixed in Raga, in strong feelings for Krishna, but he, a very definite desire to attain that. So, uh, this is possible if one follows the rules and regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti, which, because Vaidhi Bhakti, that we follow this rule, you should uh, chant. Well, chanting that brings us in association with Krishna, and by chanting, feelings for Krishna arrives. By, by serving Krishna, by, by, uh, Chanting his names, all the rules and regulations, they are given in Bhakti Rasamrita Siddha. 
Bhakti Hari. Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, who himself says that oh, they're all centered on hearing and chanting about Krishna. So this hearing and chanting that gives rise to feelings for Krishna, that the whole series of verses is there in Bhagavatam, Shrimpatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtan. This punya, this is not mundane punya, but this is transcendental punya by hearing about Krishna. The dirty things in the heart are cleared away, and then uh, one becomes uh, fixed in, as one becomes steady in hearing and chanting about Krishna, then uh, one becomes uh, fixed in Bhakti Yoga. There's a whole series of verses to explain that. So, uh, this uh, hearing and chanting, this is the essence of Vaidhi Bhakti. But then again, it's also stated that simply following the rules and regulations in itself will not give Bhakti. So this appears to be contradictory. Here, Bhakti is done so Sarataka is saying that Vaidhi Bhakti, that leads to Raga Nuga Bhakti, which leads to uh, Krishna Prem, fully fledged Krishna Prem, which is the goal of, ultimate goal of life, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu particularly has come to teach. Unatanjala Rasa, the, the, especially the loving feelings of the Rajavadhu uh, Varadina Ya Kaupita, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially so many great Vaishnavas came before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when they taught love of Krishna, but especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught love of Krishna following in the first steps of the damsels of Vrindavan, which Surup Damodara Swami has described as Unatajvalaras, resplendent, top resplendent love of God. This, this uh, Rupa Goswami calls that uh, Ujvaras, Shingaras, Madhuryas, three different names for this. this uh, so, uh, Unatajvaras, Ujvalarasa, that is that between the Krishna and his lovers, but specifically Unatajvaras, or more, even more than. Then between Krishna and his lovers specifically means those in Vrindavan, so it's a very confidential topic. Uh, how is that to be obtained? Not through Vaidhi Bhakti, says Rupa Goswami. Through Vaidhi Bhakti, says Bhakti Sanchasri Thakur. So is Bhakti Sanchasri Thakur contradicting Rupa Goswami? Certainly not. It should be understood like this that in Vaidhi Bhakti, one of the uh, principal rules and one that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, stated as one of the five most important principles in Hari Bhakti, in Vaidhi uh, Sadhana Bhakti, is, or in any stage of Bhakti, is Sadhu Sangha, associating with devotees. So that's also one of the rules, but if one follows all the other rules but doesn't associate, associate with this, particularly with advanced devotees, then the uh, necessary advancement will not take place because the, those who are uh, perfect devotees, they have the quality of smarantas smarantas cha. Personally, they always remember Krishna. They don't undertake any sadhana to do so, but they automatically remember Krishna. They cannot forget, just like a young boy who's got fallen in love with a young girl, he cannot forget her. So the perfect devotees, they always remember Krishna, and their kirtan is very powerful. As Prabhupada said, chanting should be kept heard from the lips of the pure devotee, because the pure devotees there, chanting of the holy names, is imbued with pure love of Krishna. Whereas, the, on the opposite end of the spectrum, someone who is selling mantras, professional gurus, that you have to uh, 
I, I'll initiate you, but you have to give me this much dakshina. And I'll come round every year and collect the dakshina. There are professional gurus who do like this. So they cannot, their giving of the name of Krishna is not giving the name of Krishna. They're giving mantras, dead mantras. There's no life in them. Because they themselves don't have any life of love of Krishna. They don't have any proper contact with Krishna themselves. So they're giving the name of Krishna. It's not giving the name of Krishna. It's, it's, it's a perverted reflection of giving the name of Krishna. They cannot get Krishna. Who can give Krishna? Krishna say Toma, Krishna Dite Paro, Toma Rashaka. Who is that? That is the, who, who is the pure devotee who has the power to give Krishna? Only one who has been, uh, deputed by Krishna, authorized by Krishna to give Krishna. Krishna is not a commodity that can be sold in the marketplace. Therefore, when Rupa Goswami says to buy love of Krishna, it doesn't mean that you will give one lakh, two lakhs, I bought love of Krishna. I went to the bazaar and we bought some deities. Very cheap. We bought Radha and Krishna deities only 300 rupees. You can buy Radha and Krishna for 300 rupees. Or a deity of Radha Rani got stolen, but anyway, never mind. We replaced, we replaced Radha Rani or something like this. The, the, the deity is not a, an item who can be bought or sold. Lord, the holy name cannot be bought or sold. But those who are imbued with love of Krishna, they can give Krishna. One cannot purchase, this word is used by Rupa Goswami, that is a simile. Actually one can kind of in the purchase love of Krishna. Uh, not in the sense of giving money, but if one purchases the heart of a pure devotee by his uh, loving by service attitude, then that devotee will give Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I, I am purchased. He said, I have become the property of my devotees. So, one who has got Krishna, not by any uh, formal method, he can give Krishna. So such devotees, they automatically remember Krishna. They're not making a show of the deity so they can collect some money so they can buy a, a TV. But they, their heart is over flooded with Krishna and smarantas smarantas. Their, their kirtan is automatic because within their heart is Krishna. Tomara Hridaya Shadar Govinda Vishram. The uh, Govinda is always manifest within the heart of such devotees and because devotees are uh, overwhelmed with love of Krishna, therefore they always, from their heart, Kirtan manifests. Kirtan is not manifest from the tongue. Even a parrot has a tongue and can chant Hare Krishna. But real kirtan is manifested from the heart of a pure devotee. Automatic glorification of Krishna. So if one comes in contact with such a devotee, then automatically that devotee will remind him of Krishna. Because he's overwhelmed with love of Krishna. Krishna praying, Dite Nite Dhare Mahashakti said about the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They all have tremendous potency to receive and give love of Krishna. So, we are advised to associate with such devotees and the association with such devotees is that key or secret which makes the Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti Perfect. That is the chanting, the hearing, the serving, but everything that will come to life. By Vaidhi means following Vidhi, rules and regulations. In rules and regulations, there's a tendency to be mechanical. And often devotees ask, well, then how can we, how can we not be mechanical? How can we overcome this mechanical? 
kind of just following rules and regulations. Well, if we associate with those who are not doing it mechanically, but who have who are jatanuragos, jatanurag, jata which whose taste for Krishna consciousness is awakened, then by their association we shall also gain taste. And that gaining a taste for hearing and chanting about Krishna. And that is the entrance into pure, de- pure devotional service, which is uh, characterized by pure loving feelings for Krishna, and that external characteristic of that is not just feeling, but that manifests as a hoituki pratihata, unmotivated constant, unstopped, unstoppable devotional service to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this? You said that Krishna doesn't interfere with us independent desire to feel it. At the same time, just one thing, it would be good. Whose temple here? Yeah, temple temple. It would be good to have a cordless mic for question. I guess usually there's only about three people in the class. Is it? How many usually in the morning class? Ten? Fifteen? Like that? Yeah? No one knows. Four. Four. Four of them. Yeah, so we don't need it usually. Uh, yeah. But we hear from Acharya and the songs that they are praying. Krishna please purify my desires. Please what? Purify my desires. Please purify my desires. Krishna purifies our desires. In the design process, we are not just independent. We divide on Krishna very much in the design process itself. So, but well, what's the question? Krishna does not interfere with our independence, so that doesn't mean that he doesn't necessarily interfere with our desires. Because if we pray to him that you, you please purify, you please, you are sitting within my heart, you please purify my desire. Or if we apply ourselves to the process of Krishna, from Shrindatam, Swakata, Krishna, we, we choose to hear about Krishna which we know is purifying. But we ask Krishna that you, you purify me. Murkera mongol to me ambishi. That you, I'm a fool. You, I don't even know what's good for me. You, you work it out. You, you decide. You do it. So that's, uh, we pray to that Krishna doesn't force us to, to, uh, pray to him or to take the devotional service. Well, if we do so, then he, he will pure. We can't ourselves purify ourselves. That's the attempt of the non devotees They attempt to become purified without surrendering to Krishna. And as a result, that is an impurity in itself. So although they may become superficially purified by following severe programs, Aruhya Kritrena. Kritrena means with great difficulty. Aruhya, they climb up. Aruhya Kuchena Param Padam. They get up to the uh, spiritual world, but Tataha Patantiadha. They fall down from them because they uh, neglect to worship Krishna's lotus feet. They go all the way up to the spiritual world, but they cannot remain there. They don't get fixed there. They have to come back because they got. They got. Uh, Purified of the of the effects of the three modes or the, the gross effects of the three modes of material nature, but the basic impurity, which is neglect of Krishna's lotus feet, they neglected to become purified of that, so they remained inherently impure despite being superficially pure. Just like you can you can clean the room very nicely, but if there's a rug, you don't sweep under the rug. You, you may clean the top of the rug very nicely, but underneath it's still dirty. So it's only a superficial cleaning. Or you may 
you may wash the body very nicely, but then if you don't pass stool, then there's some impurities inside. So, certainly we should pray to Krishna, you purify my desire. Krishna won't force us to pray like that. That's independence we have. That much independence.